Hey guys, how's it going? So today I am going to do a first impressions let's play review of a game called Euro's Hour. Uh, as always, I'm going to play the game for an hour or so and I'm going to give you my running commentary and opinion on the game if you only want to hear what I think about the game and if you're in a hurry then you can simply skip to the last 10 minutes or so of the video where I will give you my uh, quick concise opinion on the game and whether the game is worth $18 or not because the game costs $18 the game is a uh, auto battler, so uh, that should pretty much tell you everything you need to know already about the game. Uh, so let's jump into it. Uh, the first thing that I saw that I don't like is the fact that the game doesn't have a full screen borderless mode. So that's something that uh, needs to be addressed. It has uh, also no uh, resolution options on full screen so resolution options are missing on full screen mode uh, you can't set the fps there's no fps options uh, there's no uh, borderless full screen mode either so those are already three things that are missing uh, that should not be missing but otherwise than that, I don't really see any issues in the uh, options menu. I don't see a uh, colorblind mode. So that's something that might be an issue for uh, colorblind people since the game is very colorful. So if you can't see red, then you're screwed. If you can't see blue, then you're screwed. So, um, yeah, unfortunately, the game is missing colorblind uh, accessibility options as well. But otherwise than that, let's jump into the game. So, uh, there is a tutorial, but I'm not going to do the tutorial. I mean, how difficult can the game be? So let's go new game. The UI is very small, I have to say that. Okay, so there's different modes we don't like to play on a tiny map or a small or a medium or a large let's see sprawling i guess sprawling is the biggest map that you can get i don't know i'm just assuming because it goes large huge sprawling so i don't know i guess sprawling is the biggest one then uh, there's also blah 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 custom maps I just want to play the campaign basically but there's nothing I don't know like is there even a campaign I don't know because it says here skirmish but what does this do like what is skirmish and then there's new game you would assume new game is how you start the campaign you know the single player stuff but anyway um, let's then take a sprawling map I guess I don't want to play on the tiny shit so let's go big or go home um, these are the AI enemies i'm assuming um four doesn't sound too bad i don't know what that over there is those are obviously the players but then i don't know what that is um those gray ones over there um this one has three enemies can see this over here I don't know what that changes over there because this is just 1v1 and then this has three enemy AIs but then there's also those gray blocks I don't know what that means and then this is just 4v4 
And then this is 5 v5, but then there's also an AI. And then on this one, there's 5 v5, but there's also multiple different AIs. I don't understand it. It would be really nice if the game actually explained a little bit of this to you, but uh, I guess that's asking too much. I mean, if you hover over things, you don't even get uh, tooltips or nothing like that. So the game doesn't even have tooltips. Let's take this one. Why not? Uh, blah, blah, blah. Plenty of regions to discover, both on land and sea, and just a single unowned town unowned town so this one 10 towns only half of them have been distributed to players with the claim the rest and then your opponents too okay so those are unclaimed towns okay blah 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 Okay, so I assume those, I don't know what those ones are. That's a, that's an unowned town, but I don't know what those other ones are. But anyway, let's take this map. I guess that's fine. And then am I going to be red or what? Um, I don't know. I assume I'm a red. There's some advanced options. Wow, there's a lot of advanced options. Look at that. There's a lot of, of advanced options. I'm not going to screw with any of this right now. I'm just going to leave everything as default. Um, Township City. Okay, I assume that's fine. Uh, and then I'm assuming I'm a red. I don't know. Number of players, single player. Okay, so you can play with multiple players. You can change the difficulty. It doesn't say what changes when you change the difficulty. I don't like that. I prefer to know what is changing when selecting a different difficulty. I don't know which one of these would be cool. I really don't know. Obviously, there is differences between them, but I don't know what the differences are. Okay. Um, so, order. And then you have various, I'm assuming, euros that you can select. And they have different perks. So, the euros have perks. And then what's this over here? Is that also my euros or what? Or are those different euros? Um, and if I select buyer. Okay, so there's three there and then three here. I don't know why it's like that. Three year, three year. I don't really understand this. Uh, I mean, I guess we can do the tutorial, but I mean, how difficult can it be? But apparently, there's a lot that I don't understand. So, I don't know. Let's do the tutorial, I guess. I don't like tutorials, actually. The tutorial will teach you the basics. You're currently looking at the adventure map and your hero stands there in the center. You start, select your hero by clicking on them on the map. You can move your hero around the map by pressing right click where you want to go. Your hero can interact with objects on the map. Go and pick up that pile of coal to the north. Uh, gold is most important resource in the game. It is used to build up towns, increase the size of armies. Now make your way to the camp on the west. Your hero can only move so far each day, but that campfire just allowed you to move four extra strips. Use them to travel northwards as you travel or of the map, blah blah blah, and you will find a sawmill with zombies protecting it. 
now that you can move no further you need to end your turn do this by clicking the button below ending your turn lets your enemy players take their turn and then a new day starts the enemies play the game the much the same way you do so it's very much like um heroes of might and magic i grew up playing heroes of might and magic one two three and four so i am very very familiar with this uh, type of uh, play style okay before the battle you can move around your reg regiments which are marked by the banners you have two different units goblin gunners attack from range while gargoyles are fast melee units click start okay where's the banners banners and these this resources are these resources that i can collect or what so that's my euro and then these are the gargoyles are these resources let's see maybe maybe these are resources i don't know let's place them close by to see if they pick them up maybe and then start battle okay apparently it's not resources because they can't be picked up blah 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 uh, during battle your own units will fight automatically see, and so will your hero too you can click and drag to order units to move but you don't have to often see, often your units will do fine on their own So why is he flashing and the game paused i don't quite understand that but okay oh i didn't even lose a single unit that's nice so that was an overwhelm overwhelming victory okay that's pretty self-explanatory so far impossible okay so it also shows you the same as heroes of might and magic it shows you more or less if you are going to be able to win a battle or not blah 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 you lose blah 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 move on to the east until you find the town then take control of it and then we take a castle Towns allow you to create units to expand your army. Do this by pressing the button with the man with a pitchfork. This brings up the unit creation screen. They then pay call to create the available goblin gunners. Okay, the man with a pitchfork over there. And then create max, I guess. Each turn you can construct one new building in town. You should build the tower, which is a type of structure that gives access to new units. You can click the map icon in the bottom left to open the build planner. Then double click the tower to construct it. Okay, so you click the map. And then tower. Uh, where's my gold? Where's my gold? Oh, uh, there at the top. Okay, so you click on that. Double click. Uh, you can now choose either goblins or scrolls for your army. There's a limit on how many units can be created e of each type, which is reset every seven turns. Next, travel northeast and send your hero to the minor shrine. So, these can fly. Flying creature is able to fly, moving faster and dodging whenever it can't attack. It is able to grab enemies close to death and drop them from great heights. It can also fly over walls. This creature cannot be affected by poison, confusion, fear, petrification, charm or burning. That's a really nice benefit. So they have 73 health and 9 damage. These have 9 damage and 62 health. When this creature goes below half health it has a chance to cast a spell which spell is cast we do not know um so this one 
uh, you can only have six of this one you can have nine of so the fact that you can have nine of them is pretty nice I think um, but let's go for the gargoyles I like the gargoyles um, they weren't and added to my army I don't believe Okay, can I build anything else? Oh no, they said I you can only build one thing per day. Uh, let's see. Gives all heroes a zero mana spell with extra power. Whenever cast, the spell changes to another random one. So I can build this if I want to. Allows friendly artisans and wizards to spend their aether for bonuses the yellow does not need to be in town let's build this i guess i can only build one per day then okay so were those gargoyles already added to my party or not oh no here we go great max okay now i have more okay well i i really think i have a grasp on the game now let's exit it's not so difficult i mean it's basically um years of might and magic but it's auto battler auto battler style so i really think it's uh, quite easy to be honest uh, let's not take a map that has any uh, um, empty cities or anything like that and we will take the sprawling map obviously because we won't play for very long on the city on, on the map and then let's have a look i don't know like i would have liked it if you were hovering over here for them to give you a little bit of a breakdown of the different um factions you know like you're literally given zero information right here so in order to get any information you have to click on it so pillar for instance and then you basically have to look what is the um i'm assuming that is a passive skill i'm only assuming so this one's passive skill is gives the euro 120 hp per rank whenever a unit close to the euro is about to die the euro will give that unit 20 of its health and the unit will become immune for three seconds so that's pretty nice it's like healing almost uh recruits fighters blah 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 gives a special spell that costs five mana casting allows you to select an area on the battlefield whenever a unit with within that area is about to die it gains 10 health and will become immune for five seconds High ranks create a larger area and can save more creatures. That's not bad. Um, but like, I would like to see what units the people can build. You know, like, I mean, if you click here, you can change your color. Um, and then you click on done and that's it. So you, you can't even see your units i mean you can see over a year what units the specific euro has but that's it you know you you, you, you can't see what units the the faction can build you don't see what makes the faction special nothing like that it's really stupid especially a person like myself who likes to min max everything if I'm not given the information to be able to min max, then I, I get frustrated, you know? It's not fun. The arrow gains ore after each battle. Ore can be spent in the Aether Forge in town to create units, spells, and other effects. Amount of ore increases with skill. Teaches your hero an earth spell with strength according to rank and increases the effect of earth spells by 65% per rank. Uh, the hero gains a, a special resource named Aether after every battle. The resource can be used, blah blah blah. 
So this Aethermancy is literally the same as Alchemy, you just gain a different um, um, resource. And then their bullet, well their um, units are Goblin Guard, the ranged, and Goblin Gunner. So, I mean, at the end of the day, it won't really matter. Well, it shouldn't matter if the game is balanced well. It shouldn't really matter what um, um, faction you take. Like, I remember in Heroes of Might and Magic, uh, I think 4 it was, which I played probably a thousand hours of, skeletons were insanely powerful like the undead race with skeletons because the undead had a, a trait or a passive whereby for each um, enemy that died in battle you would get skeletons either ranged skeletons or melee skeletons so um, the more battles you won and the more enemies you killed, the more powerful you got. So I remember like by the end of um, the campaign and the campaign lasted days, like literally I would play for days on a single map in Yodas of Might and Magic. Uh, by the end of the campaign, I would have 9,999 ranged skeletons. And they would just shoot and they would do stupid amounts of damage. I'm talking about they would kill uh, a horde of dragons like in one hit. And a horde of dragons is like stupidly powerful. Each dragon has like a thousand HP. And the skeletons only have like 20 HP each. But if you have 9999 of them, then they just start doing insane amounts of damage. And like... In my opinion, Undead was a little bit overpowered in those games. So you would hope that um, the this developer, and by the way, this game is developed by a single developer. Uh, you would hope that this developer um, has balanced all of the different um, races, you know. Uh, gives rallying to all friendly units close to the Euro, which increases health, damage and speed temporarily by 15%. Places all friendly units after casting a spell. This increases health, damage and speed temporarily. Duration is also increased with ranks. I don't like that very much because everything is temporary that they give. Uh, Bane. This hero gains the curse of undeath which is passed on to enemies through their attacks. Enemy units afflicted will turn into Permanent undead units on death. You see, this is the type of thing that I, I'm talking about. This is basically the same thing that I was literally talking about. Um, increase Euro's health by 60 and damage by 3 per rank and teaches the Euro charge. When the Euro dies, a group of skeletons are summoned. So this will give you constant units. The Euro gains the curse of undeath which is passed on to enemies through their attacks i'm assuming their attacks means the euros attacks not the enemy's attacks so the unit has to attack well the euro has to attack someone in order to pass the curse of undeath onto them but that's really a good a good passive in my opinion and then whenever a euro Whenever the Euro casts a spell, the Curse of Undeath is granted to friendly or enemy units depending on the spell. Friendly units with the Curse of Undeath pass it on through attacks. Enemy units afflicted will turn into permanent undead units on death. This one is so far a very interesting um, faction. Decay, I think, is a very good faction. Let's have a look further. Uh, give... This is the Euro, a special fire gating spell costing zero mana with one day cooldown. The spell teleports the friendly units across the battlefield and creates an explosion. And then blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. I don't like that. I'm going to go through all of these functions. I want to make sure that I'm choosing the quote unquote best one. 
If the year of a special spell shadow cloning ability which summons temporary shadow clones uh, of the Yarrow and nearby ally allies at a desired spot on the battleground. Uh, number and strength of shadows increases with skill. Blah 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 blah. Okay, that's not so good in my opinion. Um, gives the hero special abilities to use in battle. Gives uh, strength and numbers of abilities increases with skill level. Gives the blah 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 blah. Basically the same thing. Gives the hero a special wild call spell costing zero mana with a two day cooldown. The spell summons animals onto the battlefield. If they survive after combat, you keep them as anima. I don't know what anima is. Uh, blah blah blah. Summons animals onto the battlefield. If the animals survive after combat, you keep them as anima. Okay, so they basically can summon as well, but it's a two day cooldown. Um, gives the hero siren song ability, which can be used in combat once every four days. Using it brings back, brings some enemy units close to your hero under your control. Value of units increases with skill. So is that permanent or what? Um, fight for you for a short time. Okay, so no, it's not. I don't think it's permanent. If it was permanent, it would be pretty powerful, but I don't believe that it's permanent. Uh, whenever a dwarven unit dies, they leave behind the souls. Several souls combine into rock elements. That will continue the fight. Uh, blah blah blah. And the chance of become, becoming permanent. Okay, so they can, can become permanent. Um, the arrow is able to find the footsteps of hidden herds of beasts. When tracked down and defeated in combat, the arrow will collect powerful trophies, most of which allow them to call beasts to aid them in battle. Okay, that's not too bad. The arrow is able to find footsteps when tracked down and defeated in combat. The arrow is able to tame a large contingent of their army. Amount tamed increases with skill. So this one is also pretty good. It's basically the same as the undead thing so you can basically tame animals and collect trophies and stuff like that so this i think will also be quite a powerful um uh, action to have because you will basically constantly be getting free armies uh, attacks blah 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 fear okay so i think um, my opinion is that it's either between the enclave or decay that will be the quote unquote best uh, increases health of units in your army by six percent per rank and for each rank gives 50 percent chance for each unit to avoid damage from the first ranged attack okay increases lack of creatures in your army Uh, recruits Rex or this hero's army over time or Apex, Apex if your hero's already if your hero, hero already has any in their army at an average rate of 0.4 per week per rank. Rex and Apex gain 5 health for each rank. So I'm assuming that's like a, um, a unit of some kind. I don't know. Um, regeneration increases the rate of mana regeneration. Teaches your hero a new spell. Let's your hero loot gold after combat relative to the strength of the defeated army. Each rank increases gold gained linearly. Okay, so not, that's not too bad. Let's just quickly have a look at the secondary perks of this, these guys. Whenever creatures in the hero's army dies, the attack act. And speed of allied creatures is increased within a distance of 48, blah, blah, blah. But obviously, the effect is only temporary. They don't say it there, but it's obviously 
temporary. After combat, allow the hero to spend mana on raising some of the defeated creatures as undead soldiers. Amount and quality of units offer depends on rank and size of the defeated army. Each rank al allows the lower cost per unit. Okay. Decreases resources of creating units in any of your tower towns by 20% per rank. And that one also has necromancy. Teaches you a new spell. Whenever creatures in the hero army dies, they have a 15% chance plus 10% additional ch rank to leave a vengeful spirit which will continue fighting for them. The vengeful spirit has 70% as, as much health and damage as they do. Blah, blah, blah. So this one is actually pretty good with the resurrection thing of necromancy so you get a, a resurrection from that and from that whereas with the enclave um you don't really get get that um i don't know it's really close between the two but i think i'm gonna go with the undead the undead rank, I oh well, the undead faction, I think. The decay faction. I think that'll be pretty good. Um, so can we change anything? Can we change our euros or anything like that? It doesn't look like it. Oh, you can make them random if you want to. But I I would have liked to be able to select different euros you know but uh, unfortunately it seems you can't select different euros unless you random them i mean you can random them if you really want to i don't like bloodlust bloodlust seems stupid but i do like the necromancy one um let's see if we can get more Oh, when you click on random, nothing happens. Literally, I click on random. And nothing happens. What's this? Oh. Okay, so this changes them. It cha doesn't change their perks at all. And it doesn't even change their units. Their units stay exactly the same. So their their looks change, but their uh, units don't change at all. And it seems it's not even random because it's dark brow, dead tooth, teddy. Dark brow, dead tooth, teddy. Dark Proud Dead Tooth Teddy. So there's literally two ones that you can get and that's it. Nothing else. Okay, well, I guess that's fine. So I think we will go with this one, with the uh, Undead um, faction. And uh, I guess that's that then. I obviously want to make sure that the enemies are not... Um, undead so let's make them delirium and arcane and earthen okay so i'm red and then blue purple green okay i guess that's fine Start game. So we've taken the biggest map that we can possibly take. Which is sprawling. It's past huge. It's past massive. It's sprawling. So this one is potentially going to be a map that you can play on for days. Like I said with the Euro Euros of Might and Magic. There were some maps that I literally play. 60 70 hours on a single map so 
Wow, the map looks big so far. I don't know what all of this is. This purple and this blue and this white. I don't know what that is, but okay, here we go. Okay, so this is my town, Necrotica. Um, okay, so I have 12,000 gold right now. I can create max of that but let's first have a look at the buildings that i can build uh, how do i create this requires higher town level to build okay town level how do you increase your town level okay um soul beacon so all of those things will obviously also be here or what soul beacon yes over there crypt upgrade graveyard antique shop okay so there's actually things here that you can buy it allows you to purchase two new artifacts each week additionally allows heroes anywhere on the map to sell artifacts for gold requires higher town level and tomb of silence to build so i can't build it right now it's there but i can't build it apparently that doesn't make a huge amount of sense but okay um let's have a look an upgraded dwelling that allows you to upgrade skeletons into bone guards that seems good soul beacon catches the souls of slain enemies and can bind them into undead soldiers over time Special building in town unlock more type of undead soldiers to bind. Dwelling allows you to raise zombies or tarantula. Weekly number, blah blah blah. Increases town income by a thousand per day. That seems really good. Okay, I already have that, I think. Plaza of Decay, where is that? Okay, well I'm not seeing a plaza of decay anywhere. Well, I'm double clicking on it, so I must already have it, I guess. I don't know. Daily income, 1000. Okay, well I'm assuming that's that then. Okay, so let's pull the upgraded graveyard. That will allow me to make... Um, own guards and then they said you can only build one per day so i'm assuming i can't build another one yeah doesn't allow me to build another one right now um let's uh upgrade and then buy max. Okay, so that gives me 31 bone guards. Um, so this is my euro that I have right now. Where are the six euros? Because it actually showed six euros. But this is the euro that I got. So where's the six euros? How do I look at my own euro? Um, okay, down here, I guess. Okay, so this is my euro, and it's the bloodlust one. Oh, that's not good. I wanted the uh, one with um, necromancy, but okay. I guess you can't select them at the end, or at the beginning at least. Okay, so that's fine. Um, so are we going to go out and attack a little bit? Impossible, moderate. I guess we can explore while we're waiting for more uh, for the day to pass. So impossible, moderate. We might be able to win that one. Moderate, possible, impossible, impossible. Why are there so many impossible fights close to my town? I mean, the stuff 
close to your town is supposed to be not impossible, you know? Okay. Is there a way to highlight anything? In Yoros of Might and Magic, you could press, I think, Alt or something like that in order to highlight the different things. Um, let's see. Doesn't look like it. No, it doesn't look like there's anything that allows you to um, highlight. So that's unfortunate. Because, I mean, I thought I would be able to loot these things, but apparently not. Okay, so you can actually go through the water. Okay, that's interesting. I don't know that, but we then have to fight those guys over there, which obviously we are not going to do. Let's see if we can win this fight. Why not? Oh no, let's go for that wood. No. I don't know what that is. Uh, it would be nice if they actually showed you what that is over there, but okay. Okay, so... We want to obviously have my Euro get in as many attacks as possible, you know? Okay, so that's a ranged unit and that's a melee unit. And we literally... Oh no, we can't go place our guys over there. I guess that's fine. I don't know how to do spells. They said something about spells. Um, but I don't know about spells. Uh, this creature has a chance to avoid damage from elite creatures and has a higher chance of being unaffected by spells. That's nice. And then projectile protection. This creature is shielded from the first three ranged attacks against it. Wow, that's really good. And then blah blah blah. Okay, so zombies are slow. Okay, so I guess that's fine. Okay, let's start battle. Let's hope for the best. Don't die. There we go, they stopped attacking my Euro at least. Okay, yeah, that's good. So we lost two zombies and three bone guards, but we got three bone shooters, one rot walker and three wretched. So that's exactly what I was talking about. You um in in Yellows of Mind and Magic you would literally gain um more units after each and every battle that you did. Like unless you really screwed up in a battle and and like got decimated, you know, you would always gain um gain more units that was really something that was really powerful in uh, um, Heroes of Might and Magic. Okay, do I have more skills or not? No, that one. Uh, blah blah blah. Yeah, let's do this one. After combat allows the hero to spend mana on raising some of the defeated creatures. That'll be really good I think. Reveals clues pointing towards buried treasure. Uh, 
Uh, as you touch the stone, a vision shows itself to you, unclear as it is, you know it leads to treasure. Other obelisk and obelisk pieces will make the vision clearer. Okay, I can't do anything there right now, but okay. What's that over there? Blue obelisk. Okay, and day. Yeah, this is one thing that also was a little bit of an issue in Heroes of Might and Magic because it's turn based. The game literally has to wait for the enemies, each of the enemy factions, to take their turn. So you're going to have to wait through this entire thing that took about 15 to 20 seconds each and every turn, which obviously um, in the lo long run is going to consume a significant amount of your time, you know? But... Um, that's one of the things, that's one of the quote-unquote drawbacks of playing a turn-based game. Okay, now we have a soul beacon. We can take these guys on. They have quite a lot, to be honest. Maybe I should go take those guys on first and then come back to these guys. But that will give me wood. Two wood per day. Yeah, let's let's do it. Why not? Okay, so those are ranged. Okay, so bone guard. And then zombies, bone shooter, okay, what's this, yeah, obviously attack, can you choose where to attack or what, no it doesn't seem like it. Can you pause? I wonder if you can pause in, in a battle. Okay, you go attack over there. So the more attacks my Euro actually gets in, the more enemies will be um, converted into uh, units for me. So I lost one zombie and three wretched, but I got one wretched back, one bone shooter and two bone guards. So overall, once again, I uh, actually gained. I didn't lose any. I actually gained a, a more powerful um, army in total. So how do I raise some of them? I, I have the skill to raise them. I wonder how how do you do that? Okay. Bone shooter. Four bone shooter. Spend seven mana. Drain. Discounting. Next. My three mana. Uh, where's my mana? Is that it? Twenty mana. Okay, well twenty mana. For four bone shooters, that well, seven mana for four bone shooters. That actually doesn't seem too bad. Let's do that. And now I have 13 mana remaining, so that's actually nice. I really like this so far. Okay, impossible, impossible. Okay, plus one call beasts. 
I don't know what core beasts is. Let's take experience. How much experience? Okay, so that's basically going to give me a level. That's not too bad. Um, blah, blah, blah. Increases hero's health by 60 and damage by 3 per rank. And teaches the hero charge when the hero dies. Blah, blah, blah. Makes poison blobs fall from the sky early in combat. Each enemy hero. Blah, blah, blah. Increases health of units by 6. Uh, whenever a creature in the Euros armor dies, they have a 15% chance, blah, blah, blah. So either, okay, I can't take that one. Upri upgrade requires level 4 and better bloodlust. I don't like that. I don't like bloodlust. But okay, let's wait until level 4 before taking that. Let's take that now. Uh, moderate. Moderate. Okay, we can take this one. And I think we already bolt, didn't we? Yes, already bolt. That's fine. Uh, and turn. So yeah, this is basically uh, Euros of Might and Magic. I literally grew up in uh, high school playing this type of game almost each and every day of my life. Euros of Might and Magic 2, 3, 4. Um, it's just like so so much of uh the same uh this game that uh i pretty much know exactly what to do in in uh, this game um but i mean there's nothing wrong with the game being a copy you know even though this game is quite a lot different from um years of the magic um i mean the art style is completely different and all of that um, so saying that it's a copy, it's not exactly true, but, uh, I mean, it, it, the play style is so much the same. Okay, go attack, go, 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 go. Inflict as many as possible with that, that, uh, bane of yours. Lost one, lost one, but I gained two and one. Rotwalker. Um, this creature slowly, blah, blah, blah. Venom and Sturdy. Um, two of them for seven mana. No, that doesn't seem... Doesn't seem super good. Um, let's discount the next one. And I level up. Requires level 5. Okay, well they said that I must have better bloodlust. So I guess I have to upgrade the bloodlust. I don't really want to, but in order to get better necromancy, I have to have better bloodlust. So it's unfortunate I'm not a fan of the bloodlust, but what can you do? Slithering Cave, you may create Ophidians at this monument. Number of available Ophidians increases each week. You can use other resources to pay instead of gold. The monument can be upgraded, which will increase the number of weekly units and will reduce their cost slightly. You can use the monument even without your Euro Year. Okay. Uh, petrification. Enemies struck by this creature have a chance to become petrified. Petrified creatures will be unable to move or attack for a few seconds. And then projectile protection. So it's a melee unit. They're very expensive. Holy crap. Only five of them cost 1,300 gold. That's really expensive. And then I can upgrade. Upgrade the monument will decrease the price of units created here by 15%. And raise the weekly growth from 4 to 7. Upgrade will also make 4 creatures available for creation immediately. Um, 
I mean, they're pretty good. They're not bad at all. So you can even pay with the resources if you want. That's interesting. So two wood would equal 255. So each wood is basically um, 125 money. Um, I don't know if I really want these. I mean, they're good. I make no mistake, they're good. But, um... They're not so good. I mean, they're basically as good as two of my bone guards. And I already have 30 bone guards. Um... How much does a bone guard cost? Let's have a look. Um, a hundred. So one bone guard is a hundred. So one of those is two fifty-five. So they're more expensive than a bone guard. Well, they're more than twice as expensive as a bone guard, and they're not really twice as good. But, um, I mean, if I, if I have the excess gold, then why not? Powers a soul beacon, doubling the rate of soul power, being turned into undead creatures, enable spending mercury instead of... Uh, in to instantly convert 30 soul power worth of units, unlocks a new set of undead to bind. Allows you to recruit units. The units will come with a small army and... A at the start price of 2500 increasing for each purchase within a single week so i can get a new euro that's nice um let's take this one first that will give us even more undead um to convert and that kind of stuff and then i need to think do i want these um, I mean, I can spend a couple thousand gold here, but then I'm gonna run out of gold relatively quickly. Um, it's quite expensive, to be honest. Um, I don't think I should, I mean... Um, it's going to cost me, like, I'm going to spend at least 4,000 on these. 4,000, that's a lot of money. No, I'm not, I'm not going to take that right now. So these are ranged once again, so I want to put my um, dudes that are basically immune to ranged attacks up front. I lost four, but I gained three. So overall, that's the first battle where I actually lost anything. Uh, Bone Leith. Uh, sturdy. Creature is difficult to knock down, has more health. Taunt. Blah, blah, blah. Knockback. And Lash. Well, I have to pay 
is it three mana or six mana for this one creature i mean it's only one creature and then i have to pay that much mana um I don't know if this stacks. Will it actually stack? Because this is already minus. Is that six that I'm gonna pay, or is it three that I'm gonna pay? Is it six minus three, or is it six with the three already having been minus? I could really be a little bit more specific, to be honest. Um, what's that? that my health or what is that um, I don't really like this one it, you pay too much for uh, that one creature in my opinion um, let's go discount and then we can see if the discounting actually stacks roaming neutral holy tits Okay, well, hopefully he doesn't attack me, because that is a very big army. If he attacks me, I'm... I'm dead. Okay, hard. I'm not gonna fight him. Hopefully he doesn't attack me. Oh, that's my movement point. Okay. I hope that the neutral are actually neutral and that they don't attack the players. <laughs> so far, I actually like the game, I have to say. Uh, I haven't played a game like this in many years. And uh, it's quite refreshing seeing a game that's built on such an old um, base, basically, like the uh, um, Years of Might the Magic franchise, but with such a uh, quote-unquote fresh um, look and uh, all of that, you know. So I quite like it so far. Impossible. Why are there so many impossible um, fights so close to my base? I mean, there's not supposed to be hardly any impossible fights so close to my base, and yet they're all over the fucking place. Like, it's just impossible, impossible, impossible. I mean, this isn't right. Okay, let's go to town to build. Um, guess we can build a crypt or do we want to build a tavern? Blah blah blah, it greatly increases the weekly number of units from a chosen dwelling in town, improves the defenses of town, creates units to defend the town when attacked. Allows you to buy and sell resources, improves town's development, counts as constructing four buildings, increases gold income by 250 per day. Well, I'm definitely gonna want to get that. Want. Can I build this? Requires Guild of Mages to build. Guild of Mages. So I'm gonna have to build that one. But let's build a tavern, I guess. And then I can recruit a uh, dude if I want. What's your abilities? Malediction and Necromancer. Malediction and Necromancer. What if I don't want that? Like I want to see, I want to see what I'm clicking. I'm clicking left click, right click, all of that. I want to actually see what the talents is and all of that. I, I don't know what what malediction is what the hell is malediction 
I know what Necromancy is. It's uh, that one. No, it's not even that one. It's that one. But what's Malediction? You know? I mean, once again, the game doesn't give you enough information. I don't know what Malediction is. Um, so yeah, one, one of the biggest problems that I have with the game so far is the fact that they really starve you of um, information. There's tooltips missing. You can't see what the Euro's abilities are or even what they have equipped or what their stats is, anything like that. When you uh, look at them in the tavern. Um, so yeah, information is uh, definitely something that can be drastically improved. Okay, impossible. 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 go to town uh, improves the tavern giving access to two possible euros instead of one and giving a chance to recruit rare euros euros hired in this town will get a boost to their bodyguards skill gives 100 gold per day so that's obviously good to build in any way because um, you get more gold per day. So let's do that. Let's go to a township. Gives plus one morale to all current heroes and future heroes. Increases daily gold by 250. Plus two knowledge to all current heroes and future heroes. I don't know what knowledge is. And I don't know what morale does. Um, let's go for the gold. The gold is... Uh, going to be very important, I think. Okay, already built. Okay, now we can have two euros. This one has Mercurial and Diplomancy. Um, blah, blah, blah. Well, still... I don't know what mallet mal malediction is. I would really like to know. Uh, blah blah blah. Like this, this irritates me. The fact that I can't see what mercurial or diplomacy or nothing like that is. The game really should not starve you of. Um, uh, what shall I call it like this? Star review of um, information like this. Uh, I could cr craft this one if I want. Uh, I don't really want to. I want to wait until the next week to see what euros come by. Then rather. Uh, 30 soul power. That's that then. I really think if you played this uh, 
game um, with like seven or eight AI bots that you would uh, be pulling your hair out before long because if you have to wait this long like 20 seconds for um, just four bots then imagine how long you are gonna wait for um, like eight bots um, it's gonna be, be like a minute each turn uh, treasure or crystal um, I guess crystal will be nice Is there anything I can attack? Impossible, impossible, impossible. Like, why are there so many impossibles? Ridiculous. Impossible. Gives visiting here a luck or morale. Possible. Let's see what we can build. A okay, more gold per day. We're definitely building that. I really don't like that there's so many impossibles. I don't know if it's the game balancing that is wrong or if I just got unlucky, but uh, really you should not have so many impossibles right close to the base, uh, the starting base, you know, because I literally can't do any of these battles. It's not, not good game balancing at all. Possible. Okay, will I survive the battle here? It says you can fight a skilled um, hero. Well, you can fight the wardens to um, get a skilled hero. So I don't know. Let's let's try it. I had, I did save, so let's see if we can do it or not. More gold per day. We are now up to 2,100 gold per day, so that's really nice. Gold is obviously the lifeblood in this game, since you can even recruit uh, units with gold, you know, um, like there uh, those guys over there you can just recruit so you can make your entire army much stronger with simply having more gold let's quickly see what you can build allows you to turn living creatures in the garrison into undead creatures Look, greatly boosts available spell power when used allows uh, also unlock a new set of undead to bind Let's go for this. That allows me to get normal skeletons or bone guard or bone shooters. Bone shooters seem nice. So let's go for bone shooters. Transforms living units, blah blah blah. 
and merges decay undead into rare undead. I don't know if I want to do that really. Might do that later on. Okay, let's save again. And let's take on this uh, prison. Um, I don't know if I can win this fight. They're not telling me, but okay, let's uh, let's do it. Oh, and it's behind a behind a thing. That's not good. I didn't expect that, but okay. Um, let's see if we can get over the thing first. Are those ranged or not? No, they're not ranged. Doesn't seem like it. Um, so, okay, let's... Yeah, it's fine. Like that. Let's hope for the best. My uh, dude died, unfortunately. My Euro. Okay, so how did we do? We lost 17, 6 and 3. We did get a lot of uh, experience. My Euro died. I don't know what the uh, consequences of that is. Maybe nothing. I don't know. Okay, and then they allow me to raise one banshee um, I mean I'm full mana already so I guess I can raise it yes that's fine and then I want higher necromancy I think recruit zombies for this hero army over time or rot worker if your hero has blah 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 at an average rate of 8.5 per week per rank okay so you get zombies per week uh, I think I'm gonna stick with necromancy okay so this is the euro that I got with an army of goblins Alchemy, uh, or blah blah blah, learning, uh, elementalism, summons elementals throughout combat, type depends on current terrain, blah blah blah. I wonder if you can combine heroes to like attack the same place with two heroes. You probably can't. Um, so what's my army looking like right now? Jeez, I lost like 17 dudes there. Um, about half of my army was wiped out. Which is obviously not good. Um, okay, so I guess that's fine. I guess I can take it. I mean, it's a free euro, basically. Just want to check something here. Okay, so the cost of these didn't increase at least. Now this one has malediction, wisdom, and blood war warping. Uh, skeleton, tarantula, hunting, fortune, warding. Um... So let's see here. It's malediction. Whenever blah blah blah. 
Definitely units with curse to find dead pass the three enemy units will turn okay so that's what malediction is okay um adds bodyguards to the heroes army during combat their power is dependent to blah 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 uh the bodyguard consists of various faction units gives 50 percent of the power difference between this and the main heroes army up to 200 power per rank that's quite good um, so I mean, this one isn't too bad, after combat allows the hero to transform some of their basic creatures into elite creatures amount depend on number of enemy killed and especially amount of own units lost. It's not too bad. And then he also has necromancy, okay that's not bad. Necromancy is good. Okay, that's that's fine, I guess. Rain of Frogs, what was that? Rain of Frogs. Spellbook, Rain of Frogs. Select an area, frogs will fall from the skies, attacking enemies. Okay, that's nice. Okay, so I guess that one is fine. I guess it's fine that we got that one. But this hero, I don't know. I don't like this hero. Um... He doesn't seem like a particularly good hero in my opinion. Uh, blah blah blah. Okay, well he constantly gets... Um... Uh... Goblins, so that's nice. We'll basically get goblins at a constant rate. So, I mean, I don't even need to fight with a guy in order to get a benefit from it. I guess that's not too bad. Uh, goblin guard, goblin gunners. Both of these are ranged. So, can I give them to this guy? Can I? How do I transfer? Can I take more spaces or not? Yeah, apparently I can make can take more spaces. Okay, that's fine. Uh Let me just see which one of these are the best. So, well, Goblin Guard are clearly better. Let me just see, can't I drag over just a small... Okay, there we go. Half of them. Okay, there we go, and then I just leave one Goblin Guard, because his ability says that if you have Goblin Guard, then you will get Goblin Guard, otherwise you will get Goblin Gunners, and I don't like Goblin Gunners, I prefer Goblin Guard. Okay, so that's fine. Um, so we can pretty much go on. Uh, unfortunately, now my... Uh, um, army is significantly weaker, but what can you do? This guy can basically go back to town, I think, almost. Visiting blah 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 allows you your hero to transform part of their army into demons. I wouldn't really want to do that. There's another impossible over there. It's really too many impossibles. I don't know why there's so many impossibles so close to the uh, starting base. 
Okay, I can basically load up this dude with army and then take it to my other dude. Um, let's see, can I build? No, I already built something this turn. So let's get the max and upgrade them. I can take this guy. So now I have three euros. I just really don't like the fact that there's so many impossibles. Like, I mean, I am basically prohibited from getting any of these resources. You know, I can't get that, 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 can't get that up there, up there, that over there, that over there, can't get that. Like, there's so many things. Can't get those two chests. Everything is impossible. Like, it's ridiculous. There's no way how there should be so many impossibles. This early in the game, it, it's ridiculous. Okay, so more of the thing is being revealed now. Is it that over there? It's that one there, and then that one there, so that means it should be over there or over there. Yeah, it's over there. Literally there or there. So I can just go over there and mine it, or dig for it, whatever you want to call it. Then I should get treasure. you come over here give me those people can i run around without people at all or what what well, isn't that possible okay, you well now you can go over here uh, let me just first see what I want. Okay, more gold per day. We are definitely going to go for that. A thousand more per day. Uh, I could go spend money over here. But if I'm going to spend at least 4,000 gold, then it's going to be a little bit rough. Um, let's take this guy and head over there to dig. It should be there or there. If it's there, then I'm a little bit screwed because there's no way how I can beat those guys. So let's get over there. And uh, let's just save. And then let's dig. I found treasure. Okay, that's really nice. So uh, I digged at exactly the, the correct spot. Okay, so you... Why do you have so many people? Why is it showing that she has... Okay, that's just a glitch because she doesn't actually have anything. Okay, that's fine. Uh, let's go over there. Like that, I already built. So that's nice that I could at least get the treasure. That should give me a nice little boost. There's already 3,000 gold that I see there. And two items and a treasure chest. So that'll be really nice to collect all of that. So you can collect these things. Well, you can actually collect all of this and then just bring it over to my dude. 
Um, Okay, let's see what's in this treasure chest. Let's save first. If there's experience, then obviously I want my other guy to get the experience for Mercury. Or the experience. Yeah, you see, I would like to get the experience, actually. Um, so I think I'm gonna... Oh, well, four Mercury isn't bad, actually. I guess I can keep the Mercury. That's fine. Okay, so you... We now have 12,000 gold. So actually, I think I can go over here and buy a lot of those dudes. Let's first see here. Allows creation of non-faction creatures. Two unit slots become available. The price of the creatures increase the more... Are created, blah blah blah. Allows you to buy, blah blah blah. Adds weekly, gives two mercury each week and unlocks a new set of undead. That's nice, two mercury each week. Doubles the rate of the soul beacon and unlocks another set. That's really nice. Unlocks four spells, blah blah blah. Yeah, doubling the rate of the soul beacon I think is going to be good. So we're definitely going to do that. Uh, so I want to collect as many creatures as possible before heading out. So with this guy, I can go over there. I need to go back to town with this guy in order to learn spells. So that's one thing that I'm going to have to do. I can't, can't not go to town. I have to go to town. And then you can obviously also go to town. I'm now getting 3,100 gold per day. That's nice. Let's explore a little bit with this guy. He doesn't have any units, but I want to explore a little bit. Perhaps there's some uh, parts that the uh, neutral AI hasn't sucked up yet, you know? Because obviously they run around and suck up uh, stuff and loot, loot stuff all over the place. So it's unfortunate that I have such strong neutral uh, AI so close to my base, you know? I can't attack them to, to stop them from taking all of the resources or anything like that. I mean, look at that. They already have multiple euros. They at least have four or five euros. Okay, let's see. Unlocks four spells. One each of minor, major, blah, blah, blah. To learn Mana Spring requires Euro level 10. Gives any visiting, blah blah blah. Okay, we can do this one. Bone Lieth and Carcass. No. I'll stick to the ranged dudes. And then I can... Okay, I can't buy more yet. Uh, let's see over here. First... So is this my magic? Frog Torrent. Army of Giants, affected friendly units, make make them into Giants. Uh, blah, blah, blah. Used out of combat, converts all the Euros movement today into mana. Okay, well, we're definitely going to take this one, I think, or can't we? 
I don't understand. I can't drag or drop or nothing like that. So I, I guess I can't learn magic from there or anything like that. Okay, so I guess that's that then. I can't build anything more. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so I learned Army of Giants and Frog Torrent now. And Curse. Affect enemy, decreases movement, attack speed, damage, power and health. Okay, so that's fine. I guess I can move away then. I'm not going to get anything else. Uh, I could go pick up more units over there, if I wanted to. They're pretty expensive, like 250 gold each. So, if one of them dies, it's 250 gold down the drain. That's quite expensive, to be honest. Really expensive. Um... Yeah, uh, I think I'm going to skip that. I mean, I could go upgrade the thing. Yeah, go over there, go upgrade the thing. Yeah, you see, they get much cheaper if you uh, um, upgrade it. And the amount that you can get also gets significantly more. Yeah, they actually get relatively cheap. I okay, will keep that guy there, that guy there. This guy can explore a little bit more. Let's have a look. Oh, there's actually something I can pick up over there. There's gold. I can... Oh, I almost clicked on that. Graveyard. Roaming neutral. Hopefully it doesn't take that chest. I would not be happy. Okay, that's pretty much that. So it seems that this is my little island. I'm going to have to get off of this island. Um, because there's literally no battles left for me to do. All of them are impossible. I'm going to have to explore outside of my island if I'm going to want to do any more battles. Let's see. Uh, allows the creation. Blah blah blah. Blah blah blah. Uh, okay, this one I do want to get because it gives you two mercury each week. That's obviously nice. Down portal is nice. I definitely want that. Let's get that one. Now then I have to go back over there to learn those spells. Okay, there we go. I've learned it. Already upgraded. All of my dudes to bone guards, I believe. I can't do anything else. There we go, I learned more spells. You can see over there. Uh, stone skin affected units increases health and sturdiness. Acid splash deals damage to all enemies in a large radius. 
affected and enemy units decrease their health greatly. Uh, town portal, that's nice. I can teleport back to town anytime that I want, that's nice. Okay, now I can go over to that guy and get my items. Two, two little items. And you're still staying over there, that's fine. 4,000 for the next upgrade. Holy schmoly. I mean... I should actually do it. Uh, I might do it the next turn or something like that. That's fine. I think I'm going to take these guys as well. Because I can now already recruit like 20 of them. So 20 of them is going to be pretty good. And um, in total it's going to cost about 4,000 gold for 20 of them. So it, it's not so expensive. Uh, at least put the cost down a little bit now by uh, upgrading it obviously. Should give me uh, the power that I need to maybe fight some of these battles that are currently showing up as uh, impossible. Okay, let's have a look. I definitely want this one. But the question is, do I want it now or later? Uh, let's get this one now. Uh, Grand Library. Greatly increases the exchange rate for trading resources at the market. Gives a one-time boost that makes... All your heroes level up. Nope, let's take this one. Okay, so I obviously want to go over there to get the knowledge. Okay. And then I might as well stay here for one day because the thing is literally gonna reset now so uh, then I can recruit more euros well more uh, creatures okay so let's upgrade this one once more I think another 170 that's not bad Okay, 29 of them, that's really powerful. Uh, in turn, I think. Yeah, that's fine. So now, in the next week, I'm going to have a really powerful army. have a look okay, it's not a new week yet it's about to become the new week okay, let's see blah 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 one thousand gold per day extra I think let's take this when this creature would otherwise die it goes into hibernation it will wake up after 30 seconds or at the end of combat each time it goes into hibernation the chance of surviving next time is halved uh, this creature deals more damage and has less health creature moves slowly 
Uh, this creature is able to avoid damage from some incoming attacks. Chance of curse are higher for creatures weaker than itself. And it's flying. So they're about equal. This one is immortal. And this one is ethereal. Uh, let's go for the lost soul, I think. That's fine. Uh, wow, they're expensive. Pretty much gonna be out of money. 350 each, that's... That's a little bit crazy. That's very expensive. It's way more expensive than those other guys. 350 each is crazy. It's almost not even worth it. I mean, this thing isn't twice as good as one of those. And one of those costs 170 gold now. So I just think it's a little bit crazy. I'm not going to take that right now. Okay, so you come over here. Give the items to this dude. So, uh, blah, blah, blah. Hire unlimited creatures in your towns. Additional units cost more, blah, blah. That's fine. And then recruitment skill and defense. What's recruitment skill? I wonder what that is. Recruitment skill. I don't see anything improving or anything like that. Recruitment skill. You see, this is another thing. Like, I would like to know what the recruitment skill actually is, but it doesn't show you. Ah, oh, here we go. Increases the growth of all units in your towns. Okay. That's not too bad. Okay, so you can just basically stand there. Well, you can go into the town in order to get all of the different um, stuff and then I'm getting more bone guard this week as well and then we will in turn we already built something yes so we will in turn and now in the next week I will get much much more powerful then we will head out and uh, see what battles we can do Okay, so it's a new week. Uh, you trade with that guy. There we go, 17 Goblin Guard, that's not bad. Uh, here I can get 12 more of these guys. Okay, now I've got 41. Holy crap, Ola. We're gonna give all 41 to this dude. That makes him significantly more powerful. Then let's see what we can buy here. You can get mansions, upgrade dwelling allows you to upgrade lost souls into banshees. Weekly number is increased. You can do that, I think. Why not? Okay, so you need to go away. Um, okay, we get the maximum of that. Uh, 
banshees. Uh, enemies struck by this creature have a chance to become terrified, but holy crap, 475 they cost. That is just hilarious. Yeah, that's that's really too much. That's crazy. Okay, so we have... Um, I can't even see, it's so small. 60, 14, 4... 2, 9, 4, 17, 41. Okay, so I think we are ready to go out into battle. Now all of these fights that were um, impossible will now be no longer impossible. Like this one is easy, so let's go do that one. Army reserves. When a powerful armor in army enters, not all its units can be deployed at once. Some units will have to wait later during combat. Uh, in the bottom left corner, you can see which units are included from the start and which ones will wait. You can drag or right click units to swap between the two states. If you have too many units on the battlefield, you can send, click send back to reserves to automatically send the correct amount back if you have too few you can click send out from the reserves when you lose enough units during combat the battle will be paused and allow you to deploy the units originally put into reserve the number of units deployable from the start of combat depends on the size of your army and the enemy's army okay so that thing is really powerful it's five of them so these are melee, melee, and then that one is a melee ranged. That one is ranged. Okay. So let's have a look here. Army in reserve. So I want all of my ranged dudes. Bone guard is good. Zombies are fine. Ranged. Oblen Gunner. It's fine. I guess this this is all fine. Don't really have a problem with any of this. Okay, so that's the maximum that I can take. It's weird that you have a that you're limited. I don't really like that. Like why why would they limit you? It just seems stupid. Can't I separate these? Like, why are they together? Okay, there we go. No, separate. Um, there we go. Okay, so these guys over there... Those guys can go up from the top. That should be fine. And then where's my spells? I haven't cast spells yet, but I, I definitely want to look at spells. Let's have a look here. Okay, so I have 50 mana. Um, deals damage. Stone skin. The stone skin takes 5 mana. Um, curse, decreases movement, attack. Um, eight mana. Uh, well, this is a big battle, so we can maybe spend a little, little bit of mana. We obviously don't want to spend a stupid amount of mana, but... I think we should spend a little bit. We can spend six or we can spend eight on that. Uh, let's summon the frogs, I think. 
frogs. Okay, that's a nice big one, but let's uh, see how big that one is. Okay, so it's not not so much bigger. Let's go for this one. Well, do we want to first curse them? We can curse them for three mana. Oh, it's very little. And I can't even curse all of those over there. Okay, so that sucks. Expected unit value, 1100. So it's limited as well. Increases health and sturdiness, but decreases movement speed slightly. Okay, so let's throw frogs on these guys. Then I want to stone skin my dudes over here. Okay, I don't even know. How many we lost or anything like that there? Holy shit, we lost 32. And we lost 5 of those. So that was a pretty brutal battle. But that was the biggest battle that I fought so far by far. Okay, and then we can summon a lich. Uh, the creature attack in a large area. Uh, they strike this creature. Summons a skeleton for any every enemy struck by its attacks. Holy crap. That's powerful. And then ranged. Okay, well, this one is definitely powerful, but holy crap. Spending 22 mana to summon a single unit is a little bit rough. But it's a very powerful unit, I have to say. Let, let's get it. That's fine. Uh, let's have a look. More Bane, I think. Uh, we can do more Bane. Why not? Okay, now that one is moderate. Easy. What is that? Oh, Sulfur Mine. Yeah, that's pretty important. Okay, let's let's do that one. Okay, so I definitely want the leech. Okay, that's fine. Okay, so leech. Okay, melee, melee, arranged, and ranged healer. So the ranged guys should, should uh, those guys should go over there, and then these guys can go here. So you guys go immediately over there. You go over there. I lost 18, 2, and 1, and 13 over there. But I gained 4, 1, and 1. Overall, that was a pretty big 
loss to my army. Uh, when this creature deals damage, restore health, blah blah blah, and flying. But we're not going to take that because we can't even take it. We don't have enough mana. Okay, it's level 9 for the next level of Necromancy. Gives the gives unit a chance to ignore damage by large enemy units. Blah. blah. Uh, blah blah blah. Increases the health of units. Uh, we need to get bloodlust in order to get necromancy. So I guess we can uh, go for that. But then I also want mastery, perhaps. Or do we want to just get this? Yeah, let's get that. Okay. Nothing there. And turn. So yeah, we can finally fight these uh, fights that were marked as impossible at the beginning. We can finally uh, fight them. Uh, but our army, unfortunately, is taking some big hits. Like, after each battle, we lose 20 uh, army. Because... Unfortunately, the game is designed so that you can't become massively overpowered. Like in Heroes of Might and Magic, you could get massively overpowered. Like if you had thousand skeletons and you go against five skeletons, then tough shit for the opponent. You know, the opponent is just going to get decimated it's just one of those things but in this game for some reason the developer thought that it was smart to make it so that you can't do that you, you literally can't become overpowered you know you you are literally limited by reserves and all of that kind of stuff um how many dudes you can take into any single battle uh, i'm not a fan of that to be honest but uh, i mean that's the choice that the uh, the developer made, you know. So it's it's one of those things, really. Um, but yeah, I don't I don't like that. I don't think that's a good or a necessary uh, mechanic in the game. So let's see. So immediately, I'm gonna tell these guys go over there. You go over there. Okay, that one was a little bit easier. I lost five, three, and one. Okay, Sanguinist. Um, do I want it? How much mana do I have? Only 15 mana. I mean, not such a good unit. It's okay. Um... I mean, I guess I can take it. Not, not too bad. But th then I have no mana left. Now let's let's uh, discount again. Okay, that's fine. Moderate, moderate, impossible, hard, hard, near impossible, hard, moderate. Moderate, hard, 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 challenging. So a lot of the battles are still a little bit out of my uh, my reach, to be honest. Uh, let's. Well, we can go do that one, we can do that one, let's go do that one, because that one will actually get us gold. 500 gold every day. 
that will actually be nice we already built there so that's fine uh so yeah i i i like the game uh it's not a bad game it's it's basically years of might and magic with a different uh play style well uh, different art style play style is exactly the same uh, apart from the uh, turn-based uh, thing it's obviously not turn-based whereas uh, Heroes of Might and Magic is turn-based uh, the battles are turn-based these battles are more or less uh, auto uh, auto chess where you just basically um, flop your uh, dudes down onto the field and let them battle you know that's basically auto chess uh, let me just have a look here. Blah blah blah, more spells. Uh, let me see. Anything nice? Yeah, I don't really see anything fantastic. The antique shop might be good, but I don't have hardly any money left. Um, so let's take that one. And then we have to visit it in order to update our euros. There we go. Uh, I can go back here quickly just to update my skill because uh, I will actually get a necromancy increase from it. And then we can also just put, put those there, put those there, that's fine. Can I craft anything? Yeah, I can craft those, but they are insanely expensive. So now I have rank 3 necromancy uh, already, and I will get. Uh, rank 4 necromancy um, at level uh, 11 so that's in a couple of levels oh no that that's actually that one um holy shit so it was actually upgraded literally just now i don't know if i'm a fan of that i actually wanted to upgrade it first and then um then uh do it but okay i guess it's fine this way around because i was i would have literally gotten rank 4 necromancy in two levels now i have to wait another uh eight levels before i can upgrade my necromancy so it's it's not not super efficient you know i would have rather waited two levels upgraded my necromancy and then gotten the upgrade that would have been much better because then i would have had rank five necromancy in two turns instead of having rank five necromancy in eight turns or eight levels at least not not turns levels actually um so i'm not a fan of that unfortunately let's quickly test the um, loading system how does the loading system work does it save every day day two day three okay but if we save now and then we go to load which one is the one that was just saved that one over there was just saved so this one over here let's quickly have a look in the game does it save at the beginning of each day or what let's just quickly have a look i just want to test the loading system before uh, my final conclusion on the game because sometimes the loading systems can be not very good Okay, so yeah, it saves at the beginning of every day. Uh, that's fine. That's not bad. We can do that, that. Then we have to bring these over here again. Update. This one as well. Update. And then this one I will bring over there when I have leveled up my necromancy. 
Um, yeah, that that's fine. Um, so yeah, let's do this uh, battle next so that we can get a little bit more gold every day. Uh, I don't like the fact that they bunch together your units like this each and every time. Melee, melee, melee. Okay, so all, all of those are melee. So you obviously go over there. You guys go over there. I'm just gonna cast stone skin over here. can see how they're running away. I think it's because my banshees um, are causing fear on them. Okay, lost six, lost two, lost three, lost two, gained eight. Overall, that was the first battle that we actually gained more than we lost, so that was a good one. Uh, Sanguinist, I mean, I guess we will uh, take this since we don't really have uh, much of a choice otherwise. So, did I already upgrade my Bloodlust or not? No, I didn't. We must upgrade it before we can get the next level of Necromancy, but then in one level I'm going to have a rank 5 Necromancy, which will obviously be fantastic. So let's have a look. Challenging, challenging, hard, challenging... Or if I I can have one um, criticism about this game, it's the fact that I don't think the balancing of the game is good. You should not have this amount of uh, impossible fights um, so close to um, the the starting town. You know, it it's not right. You should have progressively more difficult fights. Uh, in a circle expanding away from the um, the the starting town, um, so it it's really not uh, not right in my opinion. We can go over there. There's actually a couple of chests and stuff over there. Um, and then I think did we already build? Yes, we did build. Um, so yeah, guys. I mean, I'm I'm gonna play the game still a little bit, but um, I mean, like I said, it's it's uh, Heroes of Might and Magic, except it is a auto battler fashion uh, for the battles. The rest of the game works the same as Heroes of Might and Magic. The down building, the movement on the overworld, the um, daily system, how you get the daily resources from these um, different. Um, buildings and stuff like that you know so it's it's pretty much literally um uh heroes of might and magic except that um uh the combat system is obviously vastly different it uses a auto battler system i don't like the fact that they uh, literally starve you of information you know like there's just so many things that um, tooltips are missing, you know. Um, you really should provide the uh, player with as much um, uh, information as possible. And uh, the um, developer, unfortunately, uh, did not do that, you know. You, you really... Um, aren't given enough information um, like when you recruit a euro you can't even see what skills the euro have 
what items they have, their stats, nothing like that. You know, there's many places where tooltips are, are simply missing. And the fact that you can't set the resolution of the game when on full, uh, on uh, borderless window. In fact, the game doesn't even have a borderless window mode. You can't set um, the, um, oh, I can actually fight this guy. Um, I don't know if they will get pissed off if I actually fight them. Well, let's fight them. I mean, before I end the video, why not? Let's let's fight them. Um, um, so yeah, the, the game is nice and everything, but it does have issues, certainly. Uh, issues that honestly are a little bit glaring. It's issues that the game should not um, have, to be honest. Okay, because those guys are ranged, we'll put them there, those guys are there. Why can't I move you? Okay, that there. These ranged guys there, and then you there. Okay, that's fine. So you immediately go over there. Uh, I want to see what kind of spells do I want to cast. Um, stone skin will be good, I think. And curse as well. Let's uh, cast a curse. Uh, you can't really curse that many enemies, to be honest. So yeah, I like the game, uh, but I do think that it could be improved um, with regards to the uh, information provided to the to the player. The balancing, I mean, you should not have so many impossible fights near the beginning, you know, near the, the starting base. Wow, that fight actually went spectacularly. We lost one, lost one, lost six. Uh, but uh, those are pretty useless. Um, so overall, we did really, really well, actually. Uh, Corruptor, wide attack, warding, venom, all of that. But we can't, we can't get it. So we have to take drain. And now we can get necromancy level four. And now, oh, we get a bunch of uh, stuff as well. Solid boots plus one defense. What does that help? Um, okay, well, I don't think I'm going to take that. Let's take crystals instead. Crystals. Blah, blah, blah. Amulet of Valor. Plus one morale. Uh, I mean, I guess we can take it. A thousand gold isn't that much. I don't think it's worth um, that. And then there's three tre treasure chests over there. I think we can go do that one. Holy shit. I thought you could go over here. Can't you go over here into the water? Why do we have to go all the way over there? Holy tits. The, the enemy went here over this side. So why can't I go across the water like that? I thought I could go over there. But anyway, okay. Apparently we can't. Um, okay, but now we, we actually have a uh, Necromancer uh, rank 5. As soon as I get back to my town, we'll have Necromancer rank 5. So that's obviously going to be fantastic. Uh, let's see. Oh, I need this uh, place as well. We just see. Yeah, that's fine. Weekly number of units is increased. Uh, I guess we can do that. Um, so yeah, I think what uh, did the game cost? Nineteen dollars or something like that. What did I say at the start? Let me quickly have a look here. The game is gonna glitch for a second, but but don't worry. Uh, it, it's I'm still here with you. I'm still holding your hand. Um, uh, euros hour. Let me just make one other percent sure. Eighteen dollars. Okay, so eighteen dollars. Um, I mean, it's not bad. 
um, if you're if you're a fan of Gears of Might and Magic games and these types of games, then yeah, I I definitely think um, it's worth eighteen dollars. Um, there are issues, like I said. Um, I don't know if perhaps at the beginning of the game it's worth um, re-rolling your um, your starting down. So obviously each map is procedurally generated. So at the beginning of the game it might actually be worth um, seeing what battles are close to you. You know, like I obviously had an insane amount of... Um, impossible fights close to me like that one was impossible 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 like some of these are still impossible even though i've got a much more powerful army now you know so i was really um squeezed into a tight spot at the beginning of the game um but uh, i think if you just re-roll if you start a new map look at the battles around you and then if you see it's not good just re-roll just start another map and Obviously, everything around you will get randomly generated again. I think that is probably a better way to start the game off, you know, instead of um, like the way that I did it, where you just go and deal with whatever was thrown at you, you know, what whatever was randomly thrown at you. Um, I just think it's a it's a better better uh, um, uh, way to to play the game to rather um, reroll it um you see what you get you know let's quickly have a look here at the antique shop um plus one knowledge plus one spell power plus two defense that seems good plus two defense knowledge and spell power no now i have necromancy four it says necromancy four but it should actually be five okay well anyway you can see there the previous necromancy would have been upgraded at level 15 but now this one because i did that little switcheroo uh it is the next level will be upgraded at level 22 so i now have actually a much more powerful level of necromancy than what i should have you know i basically would have waited until level uh, 15 before I would have been able to get this level of necromancy. So I have a level 15 necromancy and I'm only level 9. So that is just a little way to game the system so that you can um, get a little bit of a... Uh... And I lost my train of thought. Um, but anyway, uh, yeah, I have much higher necromancy that one than what I should have and i think this faction is pretty nice um it's not it's not exactly the same as years of might and magic which i expected you know um but um yeah i definitely think that this game is uh gonna be a lot more difficult due to the fact that you can only take a certain amount of enemy uh, a certain amount of um uh friendly units into um battle you know um you can only take a certain amount into battle so um it's gonna make it um so that you can't uh basically ever uh, massively overpower the enemy so that means that in basically each and every fight you are going to lose um friendly units you know um and there's nothing you can do about it so um it's it's unfortunate but uh it's one of those things uh, i think i'm gonna equip this one instead because this one actually will allow me to um recruit uh people that i've uh, defeated so that might actually be pretty nice and it's now gonna be the end of the week so that will make it um, so that um, uh, I get new people. So let's quickly just end the turn. I think I already built over here. Yes, I did. So let's end and let's end the uh, video on a new week so that we can just see if anything 
nice changes or anything like that. Uh, to be honest with you, I don't like the fact that you have multiple Euros. That's one thing that I also didn't like from uh, Euros of Might and Magic. I, I am a person who much more prefers to have a single character or a single Euro, you know. Um, I, I don't like it when you uh, have to have um, multiple different um, uh, uh, people, you know, like I prefer to have one very strong Euro or one very strong character. And unfortunately, uh, in this game, you are forced to um, have uh, multiple different Euros and stuff like that, you know. Um, so yeah, I'm not not a fan of that really. Let's see that over there, and then we can build one final building. Let's see which one we want to make it. We can upgrade our vampires if we want to. A mercenary wall. Non allows creation of non-faction creatures. No, thank you. Uh, we can upgrade this one, I guess. Yeah, that's not bad. And then we can go over here. We can... Uh, upgrade these to max, obviously. We can get the maximum of these. We can upgrade them. Uh, we can... Holy shit. These actually cost one um sulfur each so those are a little bit too expensive in my opinion but i have way way more than what i need in any way um with regards to um units so i'm not even gonna bother with any of the other ones let's just check here once again archery skill creature speed that might be nice Summoning skill, part of Mesmer, blah, 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 50% of summoned creatures become permanent. Wow, that's really nice. Uh, even though I don't have a, a summoning Euro. I have one summoning Euro, but it, that, he doesn't actually have the summoning skill. Um, yeah, it, it doesn't actually have the summoning skill. Uh, this is nice. So yeah, I'm not going to take that because it, the speed is also important in the game, actually. And that one is nice, but summoning, I, I don't actually have um, summoning skill, you know. Um, I'm on, I think this guy, he's got elementalism, he's got a bunch of abilities, but not summoning. So giving him more summoning skill... Well, giving him summoning skill won't help because he doesn't have summoning skill to begin with. Okay, she has summoning, so this is something that she could um, actually use. You know that that item she could actually use. But yeah, I'm not I'm not gonna invest in it. And then I want to have a look here. This chamber will actually give me higher level. Units transforms living units in the garrison to undead units. So let's take the goblin gunner. No, the goblin gunner is the goblin gunner the good one? No, it's not the good one. So let's take the goblin gunner. What transforms living units in the garrison to undead? Okay, let's take that. Transform and it transformed it into wretched. That's stupid. Like, I, I would have liked to get, like, uh, um, ranged undead units or something like that. Now I sacrificed ranged units for non-ranged units, and I prefer to have more ranged units. But anyway, um, this is my army now. Two of them, one of them, 17, 26 ranged, uh, 16, or is it 18 banshees, 72 ranged bone shooters, 53, I can't even see there, 53 bone guards and 33 rot walkers. 
so that is how far we got and we obviously have a bunch of spells so now if we want to fight that one is easy 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 moderate moderate easy moderate easy easy moderate moderate easy so i can pretty much kill anything on this island now but it took me oh that one is hard uh, it took me um three hours almost you know which in my opinion should not be uh, like that you should be able to defeat anything on your uh, island at your starting position um so yeah guys do i recommend the game um yeah yeah sure it, it, it's a game that's worth 18 dollars in my opinion um but you need to like this type of game if you don't like this type of game then you're not gonna enjoy your 18 dollars worth of game you know this is a very niche game you really have to like um Yaris of might and magic uh play style games already from the beginning um in order to to really enjoy this game so yeah i do recommend it it has some issues but uh, overall i think it is worth um 18 dollars uh, uh so yeah guys as always it would be really appreciated if you guys would head over to nexus.gg forward slash lfp gaming if you are going to buy any steam games this game is not available on there but uh, there are many other games available on there borderlands 3 god of war uh, shadow warrior 3 um, really a whole bunch of uh, good games and if you buy a game on there you're giving 30 percent more of your money to the developer and it doesn't cost you anything extra and you still get your steam key so i think that is pretty awesome so yeah guys that's pretty much it thanks a lot for watching and uh, I will see you guys next time.